Hello, welcome to the Demonstrating Implementation Excellence Stream of SNOMED City Expo 2021. My name is Farzan Ashrafi and I'm a terminologist at SNOMED International and will be moderating today's session. Please use the live Q&A in your touchpad device to type your question to the presenter. All questions will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. I am now pleased to introduce Betania Arisve from AGE SIC, who will be presenting successful implementation of a national EHR using a SNOMED CT Uruguay use case. Betania, please proceed. So thanks for the introduction, first name. So it's a pleasure to share with you this presentation as a member of the LULU program on the implementation of our national electronic health record in Uruguay. So just a bit of context, Uruguay is situated in South America and it has like three and a half million inhabitants and it's well positioned in the region in digital governance, in connectivity, digital rights, transparency and open government and digital health. And since 2018, Uruguay became member of the Digital Nations. So that's the group of the most digitally advanced countries in the world. And uh, in 2005, a big major health reform was held. And this served as the basis for the next steps in e-health. So now we have an unpartitioned system and it is an integrated health model that was created. It's called the National Integrated Health System, or SNES in Spanish acronym, and it joins both the public and private sector. So in 2012, the Uruguayan Health Governance Initiative, Saludui, was created, and it's a healthcare project that looks to promote the intensive use of information and communication technologies in the health sector to improve healthcare quality and continuity. Saludui is a health initiative from Presidency, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Economy and the National, National Digital Agency or AGESIC. And it's also where our National Release Center is situated. Well, this is the National Electronic Health Record Model, and it's based on data protection standards, federated model, and interoperability platform. So the federated model is, um, means that every healthcare provider is responsible for the document generation and custody. Uh, by interoperability platform, we mean uh, all the technical infrastructure that allows healthcare providers to exchange clinical information in the clinical event context. And the data protection settles the technical definitions and good practices for national platform security. And we also based on standards that were international and used worldwide, like HL7, IGE, or CDA, in order to achieve interoperability both in the technical and semantic ways. And here we have some milestones of Salud program. As we already mentioned, it was created on 2012. And then Uruguay became member of Sonoma City that same year. And the first digital agenda took place. It's like a five year term agenda with uh, digital policies. And then in 2015, we had the pleasure to be uh, the host of the SNOMED uh, International Expo. Um, then an adoption plan was made in 2015. And that adoption plan is for healthcare institutions to, to adopt the National Electronic Health Record and it has some stage, stages and dates to accomplish uh, those goals. And nowadays we're working in the structuring of the minimum data sets that we'll talk in a few minutes. So here it's a diagram of the National, National Interoperability Health Platform. Um, 
the NEHR is conceptualized like a clinical information exchange model between healthcare providers, where each healthcare provider will make available standardized clinical documents that are generated from the different health information systems. So every healthcare provider has its own system, but it's going to interoperate through a national platform. And it has four modules, the user EMPI, as is the Enterprise Master Patient Index, that identifies a patient uniquely at a national scope. Then we've got the XSDB, that's the events registry that contains the reference to the clinical repositories that are in the healthcare providers of where the clinical documents are stored. So the information, the CDAs or clinical documents are stored on each healthcare provider. They're not on the platform but the event registry has like a reference to, uh, to every healthcare provider so that we can know where the information is. And then we've got the access control that logs clinicians access to the national electronic health record. And over all of this um, diagram, we've got the, an, a tool like the business intelligence tool for the Ministry of Health uh, where he or the ministry can access all this information and build policies at a nationwide scope. So here we've got two scenarios. In the first one, the patient goes to a doctor visit and generates a document which is stored in the local system and in local repository. And at the same time, it's going to generate a registry in the event registry on the national platform. And when, when the patient goes to a second healthcare center in scenario two, um, the doctor can consult on the platform which events the patient already had. And if he wants to retrieve any of those documents, he can do it from institution A. And that's all thanks to the platform and to the MP, the Master Patient Index, where we can identify the patient uniquely and also consult the event registry. So the, the NEHR adoption plan started in 2015 and currently comes with five stages. Four of them are already finished. And the first four stages involve user identification on the platform, uh, document standardization, uh, registry and retrieval of clinical documents. And well, well, now we're in state five, we're working with analytics and minimum data sets. We've got 103 institutions for the first four stages and 53 institutions that are on scope for the state five, but this is continually growing. Uh, One hundred of percent of the national integrated health system institutions uh, are registering events in the national platform currently, so it's the total, and more than ninety percent of stage five on scope institutions. These are fifty-three institutions are registering structured documents in the national electronic platform. And this is a total amount of clinical events that are registered in the national platform until September this year. It is uh, 140 million and it's, it's been growing for the whole year as you can see on, on the graphics. And there are more than 700,000 exchange documents between healthcare providers. This means when a clinical a clinician wants to retrieve a document from a patient from other healthcare provider. Well, and how do we use SNOMED in our electron, national electronic health record? So we noticed that SNOMED T is a key component for semantic interoperability in the adoption plan. And well, it, it was necessary for clinical registry, for patient safety, and afterwards for analytics too. So 
So Salud's strategy for implementing Snowmicity was providing a free cost terminology server from which codes can be consumed for, from every institution uh, nationwide and registered in clinical documents. So the terminology services allow clinicians to use interface language. By this, we mean including synonyms, eponyms, acronyms, and most naturally as possible. And this is stored in a thesaurus, and which are then that terminology is coded with SNOMCT as the reference language behind the scenes. So the first strategy we had for semantic interoperability started by building a document ontology that uniquely identified the type of document that was being registered. And for that, the strategy was building a three axis model. On the first axis, we generate the general type of document. In the second axis, we detailed the type of document that was going to be registered. And on the third axis, we used the service. So all the CDAs that are, that are registered in the platform uh, should have this, must have this document ontology in order to know which document we're talking about. And uh, it's very necessary for retrieval uh, because when a clinician wants to retrieve a document, it's, it's very important that the document is very well identified through this ontology. Here we've got an example for the tomography report. In the axis one, we've got the general type that is an imaging report, a kind of imaging report. In axis two, we say it's a computed tomography report. That's the specific type. And on the third axis, we are saying that it was generated in an imaging service. So with all these three axes, we have necessary information to identify the document itself. And now we're working in the minimum data sets. What are minimum data sets? They are selected information from clinical events that are carried by a healthcare provider that are considered to be essential for continuity of care, as well as to generate information for public health management that are exchanged through the national health platform. So the national adoption plan started by registering level one CDAs. It's a picture you see on the screen on the left. So that's level one CDAs, like for example, PDFs. We started by registering that kind of documents, but then we started to evolve to get the sections coded and the entries coded with domain T and the values that were possible for every entry. And that's a level three CDA. And from that level three CDA, we decided to create minimum data sets for different um, events, clinical events. So in 2014, a working group was created that involved different healthcare areas, representatives such as healthcare institutions, yeah, the academy, the health ministry, to define the minimum data sets for this event, the outpatient visit, uh, the emergency notes that were both ambulatory assistance or emergency door, and the hospital discharge. And well, it was a really long process and quite tough at times, but finally clinical and technical guides were defined and were published and institutions started to adopt those, those guides on their systems. Well, here's some key aspects of our National Release Center. What do we do? We work on the extension updates, and we also continue to work on the requests from our e-health community. And that could be like uh, questions related to the minimum data sets or the ontology or addition of new content and extension, or inquiries of every, every type related to this normality. And uh, who works on the content? Well, 
terminology expert that are trained with NOMCT courses. And when needed, we also consult with experts from different domains, for example, in surgery field or imaging or clinical specialties. And we also have some external experts advisors like that help us with the release process and, and give us some tips on, on modeling too when, when needed. And nowadays we've got 24 SNOMED courses dictated. And on those courses, we, we cover basic aspects of the terminology such as general model, main components, uh, use cases in our country, and we also make some practical exercise in a Moodle platform. And they are open and free for our community. They are dictated in personalized groups um, in person. And then we've got the, per the terminology services courses that focus on understanding the benefits of using a terminology server, the good practices, and its correct usage. So there's more than 600 people that have already taken the introdu introductory course and more than 200 people that took the terminology server course. And well, these are some photos of the 2015 Expo. We're really glad to, to hold that Expo in Montevideo. And it was a major event for us. So it was a, a milestone of our roadmap. And last year, we also had the pleasure to have a uh, Uruguayan Elizabeth Silva that presented a use case of implementing a terminology server in a national healthcare center using SNOMED CT and graph databases on SNOMED CT research, research web series. And it had more than 100 attendees from the Americas and Europe. It was held in Spanish too. Well, now we're planning the 14th release of the Uruguayan national extension that is due for December. And on our last release, we reached uh, over a thousand new concepts that were created on the extension. We've been working in different fields. And we also started working on structuring data for different health ministry requirements to support public health monitoring for real time automatic notifications. So we're trying to identify which are the requirements of the, of the government to health policies and, and taking that information that is not already modeled on the, the CMD, the minimum data sets. And we're trying to modeling that so that when, when that information comes out, a real-time automatic notification is, it goes to the health ministry in um, real time. And we're already starting to use the information that was that is taken from the minimum, minimum data sets to build public health policies and monitoring disease-oriented cohorts. We're also finishing the guides for imaging, laboratory, pathology, anatomy, and diagnostic and therapeutic procedures reports. And also we're working on the operative description notes. So all of this took a lot of time. Uh, I would say like nearly two years, but we, we've already uh, finished to define which the content is with the clinical groups. And we're working on, on the guides on generating XML examples for implementers. So which were our challenges in the, on the journey? And first, uh, electronic health record modifications and local systems involved investments on healthcare providers. And clinicians adaptation to information structuring was a, a major implementation challenge too because they needed to adapt to those no, new fields on the minimum data sets. Some of them are compulsory, others optional. And for that, we noticed that the terminology server worked out well. It was an excellent strategy to implement SNOMED because it doesn't disturb the clinical event. And at the same time, they can add new terms that are not already on the, on the server. And so it's a, a growing process. And also we noticed that 
we needed to involve actors for the that we're going to use the minimum data sets from the first stages, the definition stages. So it was important that they got involved and they felt that, like they could participate and give their opinion because they were the ones that were going to use the, the minimum data sets then in practice. So the lessons learned was that Sonoma CT was a key for structuring clinical data and processing information. All of the, of the entries and the values were coded in, in Sonoma, and this is a key for us. And structuring minimum data set was crucial to ensure continuity of care and data structuring at a national scope. And also it was very important to count with the national regulation support and adoption plan that could help healthcare providers to have uh, dates to fulfill implementation. So the next steps is um, developing a healthcare user and professional app, a decision support system and artificial intelligence algorithms, the patient summary, telehealth, and we're already working in national e-prescribing so we'll keep moving, moving on to that. So there are major aspects that we want to, to grow and grow on and, and develop in the next years. And we'd like to end with this phrase that results on invested efforts in data standardization are starting to generate invaluable information for healthcare providers, um, sorry, institutions and e-health national initiatives. So we're now starting to see the, the fruit of all those, uh, just the time that was quite long, but we, we could generate the basis and, and structuring information. And now we're starting to, to analyze that information and it's getting to be very valuable for us. And adoption takes time, but we can't expect harvesting information without investing in data structuring first. So that's first stage we had to do. So thanks everyone for watching and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have now. And we want especially to thank Snowman International to be part of its community and share our experience in this forum. Thank you, Petanio. Okay. Can I ask that in this, uh, please give us a moment while we switch over from our pre-recorded content so that Petania can address the question you have been submitting live. Uh, please note that this session will be available on the event platform for the next three months. Thank you. So hello, uh, I think that we can now go ahead with the question that have been submitted to the QI uh, QI platform. I just wanted to remind everybody that you still can submit your question via AirTouch at the bottom right of your screen. Um, we have a couple of questions. The first one submitted by Charles is asking, can patient and citizen access and use their own data? Can I ask you to repeat, please? Sure, sure. The question is, can patients and citizens access and use their own data? Great. Um, hello, everyone. Um, yes, they can, they can uh, make some consumption of the terms, and they are going to use those terms through the, um, the platform. And when they use those terms, those terms will be stored on their local documents, CDAs. So uh, that documentation is going to be stored on their own repositories. So the information is um, from the institution. And through the um, local portals of the health in institutions, the citizens will be able to access their clinical information and there is also a national platform where the uh, citizen can access and um, can have access to their to their information, uh, the information that is stored on the national platform. 
and check their their clinical data, which is already uh, stored and um, sorry registered on platform. The one which is not registered yet because the, their healthcare provider has not yet uh, registered it on the national platform won't be able to access to be accessed by the citizen. But in case it is uh, already registered, they can access through the national uh, portal. And in case they want to access through the local portal, their health institution portal, they can do it too. I'm not sure if I'm answering correctly the question, but that's it. Okay. So moving on to the next question, actually it's a comment by Jay and also a couple of question uh, in the comment. So uh, Jay is saying that this seems uh, quite similar in approach to what I've seen in Singapore, Sweden, even UK to the point. So congrats on getting here. Uh, you mentioned XML. Is that because the local systems don't use FHIR, HL7, CDA, or Open EHR? So that's the first question. Do you want to answer it now? And then I uh, pose the second question. Oh, great. OK. Um, yes, we, we haven't made any um, implementation with FHIR yet. Uh, we decided. This initiative started uh, some years ago, like maybe seven years ago, when the when we studied the international standards that were available at that time. So we decided to go through XML and CDA. So we started developing um, our platform with those standards, and after that, it came fire. But we we already were working with XML and CDA, so we continued working on that line. But who knows, maybe we can uh, do something else. But now we're working with, with CDA, HL7, and XML. OK. Uh, and the second question is related to the mapping of the local data codes to the Snowman City. Have you mapped all of them? Uh, I mean, the local codes to the Snowman City? Um, in fact, we were thinking about a decentralized model where each healthcare provider can have uh, their own local terms and it, they can map those terms to our um, um, terminology. Uh, we, we provide through the terminology server uh, centralized, um, centralized codes your put in tables and so they can map their local codes to those codes but when we validate the, the codes we're going to use our centralized codes so they can still have their their own codes in their local systems but when they they use this you know, minimum data sets they need to use the centralized terms it can be through some tables that we make available, and, or it can be through the terminology server. But they can still use their own local terms mapped to those terms that we, we provide. Okay. We have, a, we have time for another question. Tracy is asking, did I understand correctly, users only have access to data that are part of the MDS? Can they enter data from anywhere in Snowman City? In a Snowman? Uh, yeah, the, in the EMP, EMPI, we, we store the um, information about the patient, but it's separately from the information of the, of the CDA. So um, I'm not sure if she's asking about and if that information can be put together, information of the AMPI with the CDA. Um, um, perhaps, yeah, perhaps we can uh, clarify that later on. They only have 20 seconds. So I just wanted to thank you again, Bethanya, for your presentation. It was great. And if anyone has additive, I saw that there are some QA questions that we can get a chance to 
um, uh, respond in this session. I encourage you to connect with Bob. Thanks for joining us and for the next Thanks.